Hi and welcome. Today I want to look at two interconnected things. We're going to take a look at improper fractions, um, what they are, what they mean, and how we like to get rid of them and turn them into mixed numbers. But we're also going to look at the opposite side where sometimes we need to turn a mixed number into an improper fraction. Seems a little confusing, but hopefully we'll make sense of it all. Let's start with a couple of definitions. So, what exactly is an improper fraction? Well, quite simply, it's any fraction at all where the top number is larger than the bottom. And that's sometimes where you also hear them referred to as top-heavy fractions. Now, a mixed number is a situation where you have a whole number and a fraction alongside it. Sometimes you hear them called mixed numbers, sometimes they're called mixed fractions. Now, unfortunately, situations do arrive where we start with one of these and we are asked to turn it into one of these. And in other cases, we have a mixed fraction and we found it useful to convert it to an improper one. And that's what we're going to look at doing. The first thing I want to do is make sure that we know what an improper fraction is telling us. So let's have a look at one. Let's say we have a fraction which is 9 over 4. Uh, at first glance, this can seem a little bit confusing because we know, because the 4 is on the bottom, that we are dealing in quarters. The question is, how can we possibly have 9 quarters? Well, let's have a look at the old circle, or if you like, pizza. We know, and I've talked about this in one of my other videos, that if we have a pizza and we cut it into four pieces, then each of those is a quarter. So one, two, three, four quarters. But by now the pizza is complete. We have a whole one. Four quarters fit into one pizza. Here we have a situation where we have nine quarters. So we need to figure out where the rest of them are. And in fact, to solve that, what we actually have to do is realize that there are more than one pizza here. Because if this is my second quarter pizza, I now have five, six, seven, eight quarters, which leaves me with another one because the fraction is nine quarters. So over here, I have a part of the pizza. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine out of four. But of course, looking at it in real terms, that is a full pizza. That is a full pizza. So actually what I've got here are two full pizzas. And over here, I've got a quarter of one. So in fact, nine over four is the same as two and a quarter. Now, if we're sat in a test or an exam and uh, we're required to make a conversion like this, we don't want to be spending our time drawing lines of pizzas. So we need to find another method of doing this. The question is, if we have nine quarters, we have to work out how many full ones we've got and how many there are remaining. So the method we use is division. We take the nine, the top number, and we divide it by the four. So your first question is, how many fours are there in nine? And of course, the answer is two. Now, two times four is eight. Therefore, we have one remainder. So the answer to this question is two remainder one. And that gives us the solution to our problems because the two is the two full pizzas and the one remaining is the quarter that is left over. So as we saw previously, nine over four is two and a quarter. 
So there's the method. Take the top number, divide it by the bottom. That tells you how many fours there are in nine or how many whole numbers there are. And whatever is remaining becomes the final fraction. And of course, we are working in quarters here. Uh, therefore, it stays in quarters there. Let me use another example. Let's say we have 11 over 3. We go 3 into 11. 11 divided by 3. How many 3s in 11? There are 3. Now, 3 times 3 is 9. So, there are 2 remaining. So, in this case, we have 3 whole numbers. 3. 2 remaining. And those two have to be two thirds to match the beginning of the question. So now we need to take it in the opposite direction. We're going to start with a mixed number and turn it into an improper fraction. Uh, I guess as we use division to take it in one direction, we're going to use multiplication to go the other way. And here's your method. We're working in quarters. The first thing we do is we take the 4 and we multiply it by the 3. So 3 times 4 equals 12. Once we've done that, we add the 3 at the top. So plus 3 and the answer is 15. So what that means is that 3 and 3 quarters are actually... 15 quarters. Let's try another example. Let's say we have 7 and 2 thirds. Follow the rule. 3 times 7. 3 times 7 equals 21. And then add the 2 there. Add the 2. We have 23. So 7 and two-thirds equals 23 over 3. And that's just about all you have to do. Why do we have to do these? Well, sometimes you might get a question in a test where the answer is something like 23 out of 5. And the exam paper might ask you to simplify it and this is something we've seen in another video on simplifying fractions. But in this case, simplifying an improper number means turning it into a mixed number. Now, they also might simply ask you to convert it. On the other hand, when we are going from mixed numbers back to improper fractions, that tends to be if we need it to be improper to carry out other functions or simply because the exam has asked you to do it. Now there is one more thing I want to have a look at. You might remember a little bit earlier on I mentioned the word simplify. Well let's have a look at this fraction. Let's say we're going to be asked to convert this fraction into a mixed number. Let's do it the way we've been talking about. We said we took the 63 and we divided it by the 14. Now, in this case, well, there are four. Now, four 14s are 56. So that means we have remainder seven. So putting that into our answer, it means we've got four whole ones and seven 14s left. OK, that's fine. But in an exam paper, usually you are asked to give the answer in its simplest form. So if you haven't looked at simplifying fractions, again, one of my other videos covers this. If you want to uh, hit the subscribe button and have a look at my channel. But put quite simply, 7 fourteenths when we are simplifying means we divide the top and the bottom by the same number. In this case, 7, we end up with four and a half. So that's one thing to be careful of, is to make sure that once you have converted, you are expressing the answer as simple as possible. 
However, what you could have done, and this is a perfectly acceptable method, is to see whether or not you can actually simplify this fraction before you start. And in fact, if you look at this, both these numbers are on the 7 times table. And if you simplify, you actually get the answer 9 over 2. Again, don't get too worried about simplifying if you're not sure how that works. Go and have a look at the other video on simplifying fractions and come back to this. But now we have 9 over 2. It is an equivalent fraction. Therefore, all we have to do is divide 9 by 2. How many 2s in 9? 4. Remainder 1, which means 4 and a half. So you could do the sum as it stands, 63 over 14, do the conversion and then simplify, or you could simplify first and then do the conversion. It ends up as exactly the same answer. And there you go. So now we know how to take an improper fraction and convert it into a mixed number. And if necessary, go in the opposite direction. Don't worry if you haven't caught those two techniques the first time around, you can always have a look again. And as I mentioned in the video, have a look at simplifying fractions as well as the whole thing then rolls into one. Thank you. Hopefully we'll see you again.